Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I price a new job and then kind of show you what goes into preparing a quote. This video will be aimed at engineers who have a few years of experience and are kind of dipping their toes into running or leading new projects. And this kind of exposes them to the finances of the projects as well. So the first thing is when you have a brand new project is to work out what information you have and haven't got. The most important one is probably the drawings. At the start, you're probably just gonna be given a set of drawings from the architect, and these drawings might be a little developed or not very developed at all, it doesn't really matter. What is important though is, are the drawings just GA drawings, or do you have sections and elevations, or if you don't have any of them, you just have the GA plans. It's unlikely that you have any details to go along with such an early set of drawings. A ground investigation report is probably gonna be really, really useful as well, but it also depends on the size of a project. If it's a tiny project and it's just some guy's um, internal house refit, it's unlikely that you need a ground investigation report. On a smaller project, you might be given a phase one death study, and that is not the same as a phase two death study report, which is more intrusive. So you kind of need to work out what kind of project it is, what stage you're at, and you know you, you need to ask the client if they're gonna be doing a phase two ground investigation report if the project requires it other kind of survey information which would be really important but again it also depends on the size of the project. Stuff like CCTV survey for drainage or the topographical survey or utility survey also going to be really really important for different kinds of projects. If you need survey information done it doesn't stop you from preparing the quote but when you prepare the quote it's good to inform the client that you may or may not need these additional surveys done to help you know move the project along. Next is probably the most important part of the quote, and that is identifying what the structural requirements is for the project. And this could be anything like walls, beams, floors, anything structural which you need to inform the client about, you need to put in the quote. Sometimes in the architect's drawings, they might indicate that, oh, you need to put a beam here because we're taking a wall out. Now, you have to really go through the drawings and identify all the structural implications such as, okay, you might be putting a beam in, but you also need to check the wall. So you need to inform the client that, yes, you need to be checking this wall here, and possibly you can't have this massive opening because you need to leave like a bit of the pier to support the beam. So all of these things will go into the quote, and by doing the whole marking up a drawing, making your comments as you do the quote, is gonna help you know reinforce the price for the client. I will never do a quote without looking at the drawings and making my own comments. So when I do send the quote out, I will probably just send my comments, which I've marked up on the architect's drawings, with my quote. It kind of shows the client that I've actually spent some time going through the project and really understanding all the structural implications, and I'm kind of not just pulling a number out of thin air, I really have considered everything. So how do you go about pricing something? Well, the pricing strategy really depends on your personal preferences and also what the company you're working for does. On small projects like what this video is primarily focused on, I would probably start out by doing it based on an hourly rate and how long I think it would take to sort of do something. This is why it's so important to identify all the structural implications so that you can base your quote on this. So if you've identified that you need to design four beams and check two walls, that's what you can put in the quote. You also need to be working out what you're going to be producing or output. So are you just going to be producing some design calculations? Or are you going to be producing some 2D CAD drawings? Or maybe not 2D CAD drawings, but some sketches or formalised markups? It's really important that you include this in your quote to make sure that you're not over-promising or the client is expecting you to be doing something but you're not prepared to do. So it's always good to outline exactly what you're going to be producing for your price. On bigger projects, this is going to be very, very different. And this is not something which I'll be covering in this video because it will just take too long. I do think that pricing bigger projects, you'll still need to use some of the techniques which you will pick up from pricing smaller jobs, but you also need to consider a whole host of other factors as well. How you present your price to a client is going to be really, really important. And it can make or break whether you actually win the project or not. If you just offer them a price, it's unlikely that you're going to win the project based on just the price. You really have to explain to the client what you're going to be producing and how much value you're going to give them. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, it's always a good thing to explain what they're going to be getting for the money. You know, are they going to be getting a full set of calculations suitable for building regulations? Are they going to get just some sketches or are they going to get some proper drawings? 
you really have to explain it to them to make sure that they understand what they're going to get. It's also a good opportunity to explain to them what they're not going to be getting for the price. This is important because it explains to the client what you are and are not prepared to provide them. An example of this would be temporary works. Generally, for me, I wouldn't be offering temporary works design as part of my service. It's something which I can do, but it's not something I would typically do. And what I can do is in my quote is I can exclude it from my original price, but if they want me to do it, I can charge them an additional fee for it later if they want me to do it, so it gives them a choice. Another common service which is quite often excluded from the original quote is reinforcement detailing. Now it's very common that reinforcement detailing is done by the main structure engineer, but because so much can change from the early concept stage to the final design, you kind of don't want to lock in a reinforcement price and early stage without knowing exactly what's being designed. So by offering it up as an additional service for later, the client can opt to choose you to do it. It's also really good to produce a document which kind of explains everything. Um, maybe for a smaller job, just an email summary is fine, attached with, like I mentioned earlier, like um, a markup on the plans with all your sort of comments and notes. For like a slightly bigger project, like a, a few page document summary is probably quite useful. You know, explaining that you've kind of looked into the history of the site, you've done your due diligence. That's kind of the important thing we're trying to get across is you need to have considered a lot of things. I think that by doing a document or a summary email attached with a marked up set of plans with your comments and notes is so important to the client because it kind of shows to them that you've spent the time and you're not just plucking numbers out of thin air. You've really considered everything to offer them a very reasonable and fair price and offering them good value. I'm hoping this video is short and sweet and if you've got any questions please let me know in the comment section or just send me a private message. Pricing a new project and scheming a new project is a really, really important skill, but you really do need a lot of years of experience in kind of detailed design to really recognize the intricacies of a brand new project at a really quick glance. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.